Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about properties and naming for carboxylic acids and derivatives. And this is a summary of some of the concepts from chapters 13 and 14, but we're not going to delve into all the details of these chapters. So a carboxylic acid is an organic molecule where we have carbon attached to a double bond on oxygen and an OH group. There's three bonds to oxygen in total, and because of the resonance available with the electrons from one oxygen to another, that makes the hydrogen on that oxygen quite acidic. Much more acidic than water or an alcohol functional group. Derivatives of carboxylic acids are also very common and they contain a group which is not a carbon or hydrogen and not an OH of a carboxylic acid. These derivatives can include things like uh, halides such as this acid chloride. It could be a combination of two acids together where we've lost a molecule of water to join them up which we refer to as an anhydride. That group could be an oxygen attached to other carbon groups for example the methyl ester or nitrogen compounds as amides. These are the four most common derivatives of carboxylic acids, but certainly not the only ones. There are some common organic carboxylic acids that we see in everyday life. For example, the simplest of all of them, the one carbon carboxylic acid, is methanoic acid, also called commonly formic acid. And formic acid is present in insects such as ants uh, and bee venom. They often are used as defense mechanisms for insects and ants contain lots of formic acid uh, and this is a natural component of ant venom and bee venom. Another common carboxylic acid is the two carbon carboxylic acid. This is ethanoic acid or more commonly known as acetic acid and it results from the oxidation of ethanol. So vinegar that we consume in our food every day is made from alcohol fermented from sugars from fruits such as grapes for wine or apples to make apple cider vinegar and then a uh, bacteria enables the oxidation of the ethanol to acetic acid which is the vinegar that we consume and so the tartness that you get from vinegar is because of the acidity of the carboxylic acid group. Well, another important naturally occurring carboxylic acid is that derived from 2-hydroxybenzene or more commonly known as salicylic acid. This is a molecule which is found in the bark and leaves of the willow tree and this is the foundation of the drug aspirin which the Bayer company produced in the 19th century by taking salicylic acid and acetylating it on the OH group to make the acetyl salicylic acid. By doing this they synthesize this compound which is easier on the stomach and does not cause stomach upset like salicylic acid does. These compounds have been used for centuries for pain relief. Citric acid uh, is also a carboxylic acid. Actually it has three carboxylic acid groups. It's a, it's a five carbon chain with an OH group in the middle and another carboxylic acid hanging off the end or the middle. And this is the common acid found in citrus fruits. So lemon contains citric acid. That's the tartness you taste from lemon. Lactic acid is produced in our bodies through anaerobic metabolism of glucose, as well as it's a natural fermentation product of the lactobacillus bacteria, which is important for food preservation. So pickled vegetables such as sauerkraut or pickles or kimchi, these are fermented vegetables where the lactobacillus bacteria has formed lactic acid to create a pH environment which is safe for foods to be preserved and not have dangerous foodborne bacteria that would hurt us. And uh, this is what gives fermented vegetables its sour taste. Acids do taste sour. Well in naming acids the IUPAC naming is to take the E off the end and change it to OIC and add the word acid. So for example the one carbon group which is commonly called formic acid in IUPAC naming system would be called methanoic acid. Methanoic acid. The two carbon acid would be called ethanoic acid but uh, nearly all references to it reference its common name acetic acid. If it has two carboxylic acid groups it's a dioic acid referring to both of them so hexane dioic acid commonly known as adipic acid. We've seen benzoic acid before. Um, if the acid group is difficult to put in as part of the parent molecule. You can use it as a carboxylic acid. So cyclopentane refers to these five carbons. 
cyclopentane carboxylic acid means that there's another carbon of a carboxylic acid attached to the cyclopentane. In carboxylic acid naming, there's lots and lots of common names, which you might be familiar with some of these. Uh, the two most common, I think, are the formic acid and acetic acid, which we've talked about. But you can see here, propanoic acid, which would be the three-carbon uh, chain acid, uh, is often called propionic acid. That's a common name. It's not strictly IUPAC, although it's closer to IUPAC than, say, acetic or formic. Uh, but it's not the correct IUPAC where it drops the E and adds OIC. Butyric acid is the same thing. If it were to be named as IUPAC naming, it would be butanoic acid. Uh, the diacids, there's a whole series of diacids with extended chains. The simplest one with two carbons is called oxalic acid, which is a constituent of rhubarb. Oxalic acid does have some toxicity in higher concentrations. Malonic acid, you get the three carbon chain, the four carbon chain is succinic acid, and so on. Um, as well as there's many other kinds of unsaturated acids and other common acids that are used in polymer chemistry and other things that have lots of common names. IUPAC naming drops the E ending and converts it to OIC. So any time you see this OIC term in a name of a molecule, it's referring to a carboxylic acid. Well, carboxylic acids get their name because the proton is somewhat acidic. And so if you react with a base, it can be deprotonated to generate the carboxylate. And acids are more acidic than alcohol functional groups because that negative charge is delocalized through resonance. Uh, that makes carboxylic acid functional groups more acidic than their corresponding alcohols. Also, the hydrogens can hydrogen bond. The carbonyl group is electron dense in carboxylic acids, so there is hydrogen bonding or dimerization of carboxylic acids in concentrated solutions, which you can see here the weak interaction between the hydrogens of one carboxylic acid to a carbonyl and the other hydrogen on the other way to the other carbonyl of the opposite carboxylic acid. In chapter two, we talked a lot about acidity and the pKa. And if you recall some of the things we talked about, we discussed carboxylic acids. Uh, for example, acetic acid has a pKa of 4.75. Compared to water, which has a pKa of around 16, water and alcohols are much less acidic than the carboxylic acids. If you put electron withdrawing groups on there, uh, you get lower and lower pKa's from the parent compound because of the inductive effects. Helping to stabilize the negative charge that's formed in the conjugate base after it gives up a proton. Which we can see also in these benzoic acid derivatives. If you look at benzoic acid itself, pKa of 4.19. Compare that to the paranitro, which is an electron withdrawing group, it's going to be more acidic. The methoxy group is an electron donating group and it's going to be less acidic than the parent benzoic acid. We also have naming for the carboxylic acid derivatives, and I'm going to focus again on these four types of derivatives, the acid halides, the anhydrides, the esters, and the amides. So acid halides are named after their parent acid, and if you use strict IUPAC naming, you would drop the oic group from the acid and add oyl to the name in order to form the group which is attached to the halide. So this acetic acid derivative, which we commonly call acetyl chloride, if we were to use IUPAC naming, ethanoic acid would become ethanoyl chloride. Here you can see benzoyl bromide from benzoic acid. You drop the OIC and add OYL. Benzoic acid becomes benzoyl bromide. Cyclohexane carboxylic acid becomes cyclohexane carbonyl chloride. Carbonyl chloride. Anhydrides are prepared from the corresponding acids. If you think about taking two acid groups together and then joining them together, removing a molecule of H2O or a molecule of water and joining the oxygen up to the other carbonyl, that's what is an anhydride. In naming anhydrides, we use the name of the acid it is derived from again. And if it's a symmetric made from the same acid on both sides, you just use the one name. So acetic acid, for example, or ethanoic anhydride would become acetic anhydride commonly. Benzoic anhydride or succinic anhydride. Notice we're using the name of the acid itself without changing the suffix of that. So ethanoic anhydride, 
acetic anhydride commonly, benzoic anhydride, succinic anhydride. Yes, they can even be cyclic if you have two carboxylic acid groups in the molecule. If the anhydride is formed from two different carboxylic acids, then you give the name of both of those acids. So for example, this side came from acetic acid, whereas the right side of this molecule came from benzoic acid. So the name of this molecule would be acetic benzoic anhydride, or ethanoic benzoic anhydride if you want strictly IUPAC. Naming of amides from the corresponding carboxylic acids means you drop the OIC ending and change it to amide to refer to a nitrogen containing compounds. So acetic acid becomes acetamide or ethanamide. Hexanoic acid becomes hexanamide to refer to the six carbon chain with the nitrogen group. Or cyclopentane carboxylic acid becomes cyclopentane carboxamide in this case. Now notice all of these have only hydrogens on the nitrogen. If you have further substituents on the nitrogen, you need to indicate that substituent with the designation N, similar to what we did with substituted amines. So in this case, it's a propanamide is the parent compound, and we have a methyl substituent on the nitrogen. So it's N-methylpropanamide. Or two groups, for example, here, N-N-diethyl cyclohexane carboxamide. And esters are named using the corresponding group that's attached to the oxygen as the prefix for the molecule as a substituent and the name of the acid as the anion. So the ATE refers to the anionic group. So an acetate ion would be this. And if you have ethyl attached to acetate, you would have the ethyl group attached to the oxygen of the acetate ion. So this is ethyl acetate or ethyl ethanoate, ethanoate. Here's from malonic acid, we have dimethyl malonate, or a tertiary butyl cyclohexane carboxylate, for example, methyl butanoate, isopentyl acetate. These are uh, esters that are commonly occurring in fruits and they have a wonderful fruity smell. And some esters that are also naturally occurring are fats. So we have a triester made from fatty acids that are attached to a three carbon triol molecule. Esters are very important constituents of polymers. For example, if you have difunctional acids where we have two acid groups and we attach that to a molecule which contains two alcohol groups, one can form long chains of thousands of molecules where we have the diacid connected to the diol, connected to the diacid, connected to the diol, etc. These are what we refer to as polyesters. One example is the combination of terephthalic acid, which is the dicarboxylic acid of benzene, and ethylene glycol, the 1,2-ethane diol molecule, and that links up to form a polymer which we refer to as polyethylene terephthalate, or PET plastic. This is the plastic which is used to make the common water bottles.